Welcome to Investor's Insights. Our topic today is worry, worry, worry. Should we worry? Or are we experiencing a bull market trying to climb a wall of worry? That's the question we're going to be addressing today in our vlog as we look at the fact that we're halfway through the 2020 year. And a lot has gone on, as you as viewers well know. And so a lot of times a bull market will climb a wall of worry. People say things aren't going well out there, but the markets have a different opinion. At the same time, though, uh, we could be seeing a market moving on up uh, in anticipation of where later we see an economy slow down. And Trey, you brought up some great information about the strength of the market and what's taking place here right now. Yeah, Greg, the, uh, that, that uh, proverbial wall of worry is, is typically built by uh, bricks of fundamental doubt. Uh, and so the fundamentals have been lacking in information of late and the technicians, a lot of the market is technical versus fundamental. The pricing mechanism of the technicians has been very positive. Last week, we saw the S&P 500 hold a very important support zone. And that's a support is a price level where buyers have come in and held the market higher. Uh, for S&P, that support zone is 3090. Uh, last week, we had a short week because of the holiday and low volume, but the market, the market rallied and held that very important support zone of 3090. And so now we're looking at 3210. Uh, that area in, in between 3090 and 3210 is the market can rally up to that point where there may be resistance. So very positive from a technical standpoint that we could see markets moving higher in the short term. In the, in the intermediate term, the, the wall of worry, the bricks of the wall of worry are probably going to be built by next week's earnings announcements uh, from companies. I feel like we've been dealing with COVID for years, but it's actually uh, been less than a quarter. And so we'll get our first glimpse of boots on the ground corporate reporting on how COVID impacted them. And current estimates are for a 45.7% decline in S&P earnings. And it's not necessarily what they report. Everyone knows what looking backward, what's going to happen. It's going to be bad. It's what the companies say about going forward, how optimistic they are. 170 of the S&P 500 companies have removed forward guidance. That's a very important uh, typical indicator of where things are looking out going forward. So we're kind of flying into this earnings season blind. Uh, more blind than we've ever been. And so that wall of worry has been built on uncertainty and we'll get to see some facts come out starting next week on companies on how much money they may have needed to borrow to fund current operations, where they see the growth in the next quarter and the next year, 2021, because everyone knows how how rough 2020 has been, what people think 2021 will be is has becoming very, very important. So we'll get our first glimpse of that, of that, of what's being built into that wall of worry and can the technicals continue to push the market higher in the front of that wall worry and push it right on over uh, into 2021 positive territory. Another worry that's out there, Bobby, that we're hearing from clients is as we continue moving forward uh, with all the political issues taking place in this country and the election and, and the economy backed up by our earnings positive or what are we looking at? Uh, you brought up a great point in relation to international versus U.S. markets. Yeah, Greg, I want to share a conversation I had with a client last week. And, and the client was asking me, as a hedge against the U.S. election uncertainty, should they be overweight to international equities? And so my response was this. Uh, Yes, it makes sense from a diversification standpoint to have some exposure to the international markets, uh, but would not necessarily be overweight, you international markets. And here are a couple reasons why. One, uh, there's weaker economic outlook for international countries, especially in the Eurozone. We think the U.S. will hold up better with the pandemic. Uh, Two, international equities have underperformed the U.S. markets for 10 years now. Uh, And then third, uh, international markets and indexes are more heavily weighted towards financials and industrials, while the U.S. markets are more heavily weighted towards healthcare and technology. Healthcare and technology continue to outperform and be the top two sectors. And then the fourth reason is that there's structural concerns. We still have concerns about the Brexit, how that looks. Uh, You see Hong Kong losing its autonomy to China. And then also there's slower central bank responses overseas, which is a concern. So again, from a diversification standpoint, yes, it does make sense in some cases to have some exposure, but not necessarily be overweight international equities. I, I think that's excellent the way you explain that. And also, you know, we as Americans, we worry about our economy, but we also forget Europeans and Asians are also worried about their economy. And from the standpoint, they're placing their money here in the United States as well, because uh, we're still a safe haven in relation to the rest of the world. Another worry that continues to be uh, asked about is about jobs, unemployment. 
you know, if, if corporate earnings aren't doing well, where are we on jobs? And Adam, you and Ashley got into a, a debate and discussion this morning. Let's just, let's kind of talk about those topics because I thought you both had some great points. Adam, you start off here just talking about unemployment and jobs. Yeah, thanks, Greg. So uh, the worry is with jobs. In the last two months, we've gotten expectations have been crushed with jobs numbers. So for the month of June, 4.8 million jobs were added for Americans. Now, that still leaves some 20 million jobs opened up. And that's where the the uncertainty kind of lies with each individual that we talk to on a daily basis. And if this trend continues, we're going to see a lot of support from the consumer side. And why is that important? And I go back to Trey's point on company earnings. So if you have more people in the workforce, of course, you're going to be making more money, putting more money back into the economy. Therefore, these company earnings will start to raise and help markets out and boost markets. Right. And then, but actually you countered on that and talk, talk a little bit when I say you countered, you, you injected some additional information. I thought that was very optimistic. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you get right down to it, of all the jobs we lost initially from COVID-19, Greg, we've already put a third of them back. You know, there's no economy in the world that could do that like the United States could. That is unprecedented growth. And the other thing as a sidebar we have to remember is not all of the stimulus that we had from the PPP program or the Main Street program from the Fed is out there yet. The payroll protection program still got $130 billion to go. Our viewers will see that President Trump is about to sign an extension of that of when you can apply for it. There's still a lot of money left. And on the Main Street side, that's the Federal Reserve Program. A lot more banks and credit unions are jumping in to help with that. So execution-wise, that's cranking up too. So the point is we've put a third of those jobs back without all of the stimulus back, which is an amazing thing, really. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And I just thought the dialogue uh, between the two of you and with the rest of the group was outstanding. And so, you know, on that note, let me just say this. There's a lot of cliches that I've used throughout my 30 plus years, but a bull market climbs a wall of worry is one of them. Don't fight the Fed. The trend is your friend. A lot of those are being tested fully in this 2020 market year. We're going to continue to bring you information, not only just through this vlog, but the one-on-one -on -one conversations, in addition to the social media that we use to get educational information out and throughout the week, uh, additional emails and things that we communicate with our clients. We hope this information has been uh, invaluable to you. We hope you share it with others. Uh, we get a lot of response where people call in saying, my friend, my neighbor, my colleague has shared this with me, and I want to have additional conversation with you at Five Plan Partners, and we thank you for that. Introductions are greatly appreciated. And now as we go into the second half of 2020, we're going to continue to navigate with the understanding, is this, is this a bull market that climbs a wall of worry? It's dynamic. It's always moving and we will be navigating through it. Have a great week and continue to enjoy your summer.